Good evening and a very warm welcome to our virtual library tour. I'm Cathy, I'm the library manager and I'm joined this evening by Rachel, one of my colleagues, who together we make up half the library team. Um, we are so proud of our fabulous library and um, so we're absolutely delighted that you've decided to join us this evening and we hope we can give you a flavour of what the library is about and hopefully share some of our enthusiasm for it with you. Um, we're going to run through this presentation. At the end, there will be a Q&A session. So if you've got any questions, you can just pop them in the chat and we'll answer them at the end. Okay, so um, where are we? If you're familiar with the site, if you've had older brothers and sisters that maybe have been here, or you've just driven past, um, we're in the lovely original part of the building at the front of the college, um, upstairs um, on the first floor. Um, if you look at the picture on the slide, that's one of our three mezzanine levels. Um, together with the three rooms that we have, we can seat up to 160 students at a time. We're open during term time, Monday to Friday, from 8.30 to 4.30, so that's half an hour at the beginning and the end of the college day and also through your lunch breaks um, and, and, and breaks during the morning. So we were having a discussion earlier today about what we think a library is. Um, I think it's different things to different people. Libraries are changing, they're becoming more digital. Um, some places are becoming resource areas. This might be very different to the library that you have at school. So what is it to us? What do we, what do we offer here? So this is a quiet and calm place to come and study. Um, but equally, if you just want a bit of respite, a bit of refuge from a busy day at college, you're also welcome to come in here, sit on one of our sofas, read a book, browse through the magazines. We can offer you access to computers. Um, and not surprisingly, because we're a library, books, books and more books, um, we're still very much about the printed page. We also have an online offering and we'll be looking at that in more detail later. And also, you've just got access to friendly, helpful staff all the time. So when you start at sixth form, your timetable is going to look quite a bit different to the one that you have at the moment um, at school. Um, obviously, you've got fewer subjects in there, but you'll also have what look like blank free periods. But in fact, these are independent learning periods. And it's time that you need to spend in college on the independent learning that you've been set, whether that's homework, preparation for a lesson, a bit of research, a bit of catching up. Um, if you use these sensibly, um, it's a good way of managing your time, learning how to manage your time as part of that transition from secondary school to sixth form. There are lots of places around college where you can choose to study. You, you don't, it's not timetabled, but you have to be in a particular place. Um, and everybody has different ways of working and prefers different environments. So why would you choose to come to the library? Well, that's a question we ask our students every year in our library survey. And overwhelmingly, one of the reasons they want to come here is because it's quiet and peaceful and a calm, purposeful working environment. So it doesn't have to be silent. Um, you're quite welcome to sit there with headphones on if you like to listen to music while you're working. But it is about showing consideration to other people um, so that everybody can get on with their work. Sometimes you'll be set work, you need access to a textbook, so we have copies of those for you to use. Um, you might need access to computers. Um, we've got 33 of those in the library. You don't need to put them, they're open access, you just drop in any time. A lot of work now is submitted electronically, but you may need to print, so we have a combined printer, photocopier and scanner. And again, this is the only staffed, permanently staffed study space in the college, so you've always got somebody on hand if you've got questions, if you need any help. So, books, we're a library. Um, there's been a lot of debate over the years about whether books and print are still going to continue, whether everything's going to be digitalised. 
and a lot of universities are going that way, but books still remain popular and they remain very popular with our students, so we continue to buy them. Um, we have course books, so those are the textbooks that are specific to your subject and your exam board, um, the ones that will have been recommended by your teaching departments. So we keep reference copies of those in the library for you to use. We have revision guides um, and study guides that also work around um, those textbooks that are specific to the exam board. But learning at sixth form is about much more than the textbook. So we would encourage you to read beyond, beyond that and deepen and broaden your understanding of your subject better. So for that, we buy books around the subject that are designed to stretch and challenge you a little bit further. They could be just for general interest, um, but they're to give you that better understanding of your of your subject. And if you're not sure where to start, what it is that you might want to read, we've compiled reading this for you, and Rachel's going to explain about those. So we have an extensive catalogue of books and sometimes it can be a little bit daunting and you might not know exactly where you should start with your reading. So on our online catalogue, what we've done is put together um, automatic links that will pull up a list of selected books. Um, so by all means, they're not, um, they don't cover all the areas that we have in the library, but they're a place for where you can start and we'll give you some ideas as to what you should read. Now, departments have given us lists, um, but we've also put together other lists with advice from, from various colleagues um, for things like medicine, veterinary science, and more recently, um, in light of, of summer events, we've put together a racial awareness reading list. And um, we, we're in the process of adding to these all the time. But effectively, within the library catalogue, which we'll look at in a little while, you with one click, you can bring up um, 20 or 30 books around a subject area that you might be interested in. Are we moving on? Oh, <laughs> Let me move on for a minute there. there we go. Thank you. Um, so we've had a question that's come up already uh, about do we have a good range of fiction? So I'm going to talk about reading for pleasure for a little while. Um, we have a huge fiction section um, and, and ever growing. And within that, we've got novels, short stories, we've got graphic novels, um, and there are a range of books from young adults all the way through um, to, we've just got the book of shortlisting, for example. Um, we get um, women's prize fiction books in, and we get the Costa shortlist. Um, so we try and stay up to date, but we, we try and transition from reading young adult novels into more grown-up literary texts, shall we say. Um, now, we appreciate that some people might find that transition a little daunting, and we're here and we're happy to help and suggest books that you might want to read. Um, and we love nothing better than having a good discussion with somebody um, about, about what books they should have a go at. We're all avid readers in the library. If you're not already a bookworm and you need a little bit of a nudge to, to get into reading, um, we can suggest all sorts of things for you. And we really encourage reading for pleasure. Um, not necessarily fiction either. We've got a lot of other, other stuff in the library that you might be interested in. And there are so many recognised benefits to reading um, over and beyond reading for your subject area. So it's been proven to improve well-being, reduce stress. Um, it exercises your brain in a very different way to the sort of ways in which you, you'll be using it for your studies. Um, and you might be aware that you use your phone a lot. Your parents might be on it. You to put your phone down and just spend 10 minutes outside of that social media zone with a book. Um, and it really changes the way that your, your brain operates. Um, so we're, we're big on that as well, and we're very keen to get you all reading, to, to relax and to, to take you away from, from the world for a little while. Now, to encourage this, we have a series of library events that we run. Every week, um, an email goes out called Friday Reads on a Friday, not surprisingly, 
Um, and we put together a sample of, of books from our collection um, under various themes. Um, some surprise things that you might not think that we have. Um, they might be very short books to get you into reading. They might be themed on um, a particular topic area. Um, most recently, we had um, some books about Black Lives Matter. Um, the week before that, I'm trying to remember now, Kathy, what we had. <laughs> We've, but we um, we try and theme it around uh, events. Oh, well-being. It was well-being the week. And it's going to be Halloween this week. Yes. It's and horror. Scary stories this week. Um, so we do try and theme about what's what's going on in the calendar year. Now, last year we had a fantastic Halloween short story competition um, where we dressed up the library in Halloween gear. Um, and one of our drama teachers came and read out the uh, winning short story. Um, so that was, unfortunately, we won't be having that this year, but I hope by the time you come to Hills, it might be back. Um, We've also started a reading challenge this year uh, to try and encourage people into reading a little bit more. We did something called Blind Date with a Book, uh, where we wrap up books in brown paper and give you very little information about them. Um, and you take them away and surprise yourself. Uh, so you don't judge a book by their covers. And we also regularly have emails about the new books that we've got in the library. Um, we currently have a, a backlog of books from over summer when we were closed that we're processing and adding to our catalogue. So we always try and keep up to date with what's new so that there's plenty of turnaround of stock for, for you to, to get involved with. So we're, you know, no, needless to say, we're big on reading here. <laughs> okay, so as well as the books, um, just briefly going to go to these, we do have magazines as well. So something else for you to read, come into the library, dip into. And they cover a range of um, different subjects. So there is a series called the A-Level Review, which covers most of the um, subjects in the, in, in the college. Um, but they are specifically geared to the A-Level syllabus. So they will cover topics that you're covering in the lesson and then they will have exam style questions with sample answers. So they are a very good sort of extra resource for, for your learning um, for particular subjects. But we also have specialist interest areas. We get Vogue if you're interested in fashion and photography. We have current affairs. So we've got um, New Statesman, uh, The Economist. We've got... Uh, new scientist as well and then various um, magazines for the arts and humanities dance philosophy you name it there's a magazine out there um dvds i guess an awful lot of you now will be streaming most of what you watch and, and dvds are less important in your lives but they still have a purpose to fulfill we have a big collection of modern language dvds in french spanish german and italian and a lot of these are things that you would find very difficult to find to uh, stream. Um, if you're doing media and film, we've got some of the, the old classics that you, you might study, um, some of the more uh, modern foreign films as well, um, and just some things for general interest and for fun that you think you might like to watch. So we're here 40 hours a week. Um, but our online resources are available to you 24-7 and at home. And as you might imagine, over, the, over this academic year, it's actually been quite important that these resources are available to you. You can access everything um, through your library account. Um, every student has their own library account when they start. When you log on to, your, on to college, account you'll be able to go straight into it and you can go through to the library catalogue so that's where you can search all of our books all of our films and um, in there you can look at our reading lists you can create your own reading lists your own searches you can look at the history of everything that you've borrowed so for example if you've done a piece of work and you think oh what was that book i've borrowed i need to go back and have a look at that i've got to mention that you can look at your own library history, find the book, click on it and get all the information that you might need. We would encourage you to rate and review the books you read. So you can just click on the, the review section, fill in a little review, we monitor that and then we publish it. So it's really useful for other students to see 
what's been enjoyed, what people have thought was, was useful to their studies. You can also use um, the online part to reserve any books that are out on loan to somebody else or to renew anything that you've got on loan yourself. So it gives you a little sort of bit of independence in the way that you manage your library account. So as Kathy mentioned, that's only part of our online offering. Um, we also have two ebook platforms, VL eBooks and um, eBook Central. Now, both of these platforms um, have a number of textbooks and uh, A-level specific books in particular. And the platforms allow you with your own account to effectively mark up um, electronic books in the same way that you might do on your own personal book that we would discourage. But you can make notes, you can highlight pieces of text, you can add sticky post-it notes to pages, bookmark pages, um, and you can download to read offline. So especially over the period where we've not been open to students, this has been valuable where perhaps you might not have a, a secure internet uh, connection at home, so you can download the books and read them at your leisure there. And once you've downloaded the books and they're in your account, um, all your notes and everything stay there. So even though you might return the book, um, you can still have those notes for you. There's all sorts of accessibility options within these eBooks. So you can increase the text size, you can change the background color, so if you do have difficulty with books themselves, this is a, a good, good resource for you. Um, and we found that the use of these has increased dramatically over the last few months. Um, and I think that they're, they're really starting to come into their own. Certainly the eBook Central has a huge, um, uh, huge list of books within it. Um, less so VL books, but they're, they're more specific. And all of these are searchable through our online catalogue as well. So you can access them easily through that and also through our library SharePoint site that we have available. Now, we have a huge number of other online resources um, that some of which are free to, to educational institutions, a good number of which we subscribe to specifically. Um, so we mentioned um, the a-level specific magazines, they're also available online. We have um, lots of access to um, reference collections. So all the Oxford uh, University reference collections that are available online. So the art dictionaries, um, the reference dictionaries are all available online now as well, along with many, many more that you can see there. Um, so again, the library is much more than just the physical resources it's our 24-7 resource as well. So as well as the, we just had an overview of the, the resources that we've got there, some of those are databases of academic writing. Probably again, a little bit daunting at this stage, but as you progress through your two years here, as you're heading possibly off towards university, you might need to get um, used to the idea of academic writing and the sort of research that you'll need to do. And when you are researching, um, Google doesn't always have all the answers. Um, if you do a Google search, you'll get presented with a vast array um, of responses. They won't be refined. They won't necessarily be the most relevant. Um, and you will need to spend time verifying the source of them because that's not always easily apparent. So by using the resources that we provide, which we've paid for, so things that aren't um, always accessible um, elsewhere, you're getting trusted content, so you know that you can use that in your, in your work. You're getting a much broader breadth of content um, and a more refined searching option. As said before, using these will get you used to academic writing um, and uh, using the sort of the citations and the referencing that you might need later on. As I say, these, these can be a bit daunting, but that's another one of the reasons why we're here to help you um, anytime you need any, any help working your way through these, navigating them, then just come and ask us and we can help. In addition, um, it's not just about the printed word, we have video sources as well. So 
you're obviously used to lots of different forms of alternative media. Um, we have access to Digital Theatre Plus, where you have plays, productions, study guides within that, um, online productions from the National Theatre um, that they're, they're offering free for the moment, and Massalit, which is a wonderful online resource of lectures by university lecturers, but based around the A-level syllabus. And quite often, some of the departments will set you work, they'll get you to watch one of the videos, and that will be used as a point of discussion in class. And finally, there's the last sort of extra resource, and that's us, the library staff. Um, I think a lot of students think that all we do all day is stamp books and ask people to be quiet, but actually, we're, there's a lot more to us than that. Within this library team of four people, we've got years of experience in school and college libraries, in teaching and teaching support, um, in publishing and even in writing. One of our staff members is a published author. So when you start, um, when you're doing that transition from secondary school, we're here to help you with just the simple stuff. So if you want to know where to find the book, how to search the catalogue, how to use the printer, even how to find your way around the college, we can help you with that. We can stop at any time and have a quick chat about the books you enjoy. There's nothing more we enjoy than that. And I have to say we ran a Welcome to Hills event in the summer where we invited the upcoming year 12s to talk about the things that they enjoyed and they were so passionate and enthusiastic about reading. Um, so it's a joy to, sh to share that with other people. When you get further into your studies, we can help you even more. So if you're making preparations for EP, if you've got some academic writing that you need to do, if you need to do some research, we can help you with those more complex searches of the library catalogue, try to find the things that you need, help you with the online research, finding that information and helping you to evaluate it to make sure that it's what you need for the piece of work that you're doing. We can help you with copyright um, and we can help you with referencing. But above all, we are here to help you, so just ask. So that's us for, to, for, for this evening. Um, has anybody got any questions they would like to ask? Perhaps we've answered everybody's questions, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody must need to know something. One of the things I did forget to talk about when we were talking about um, reading for pleasure was that we started a virtual book club during lockdown, um, which we were a little bit tentative about, but actually worked brilliantly. Um, the students really enjoyed it. Uh, we managed to get a couple of books read before we finished uh, for the end of term. And, we, and I'm glad to say the book club is carrying on in a semi-virtual sense. Um, and that's being run by one of our year 13 students, Anya. Um, and there's so much enthusiasm for it, it's really great. So um, I'm glad to see that it's still continuing, um, even though we're, we're sort of back on site, um, but it's, it's, it's still happening. Okay, so, um, oh, we've had a question, fantastic. What opportunities are there for creative writing? Um, so we have run, last year we ran um, the, the short story competition in Halloween. And we were planning a couple of more events for, for the remainder of the term. And unfortunately, this, this thing called lockdown got in the way of that. Um, I think as well, I'm right in thinking, Kathy, that um, the English department often run creative writing. And I think it's part of the sort of clubs and societies offering that, that there will be some creative writing in there. Um, so Faith has asked, how busy is the library normally? Um, it is busy. As I said, we can seat up to 160 people. It very rarely gets to the maximum, but there's quite often in the sort of the core part of the day, well over 100 people here. But there's always enough space, usually for the people that are, are looking for it. And as I say, even though it's, it is busy, we do keep it to be a quiet and sort of calm, purposeful atmosphere. So sometimes the amount of people in here you wouldn't really expect. And we have these sort of interconnecting rooms, so it's not everybody all in one large room. I think as well, um, it does vary from time of day. So um, first lesson and last lesson do tend to be quiet. And then as the day progresses, um, as more people come on site, it, it does get busier. And um, 
Sorry? And if it rains. And if it rains. Um, time of year as well. Obviously, you know, certain times of year are incredibly busy in here. And we can always tell when coursework is due because suddenly, suddenly it's busy and there's a queue at the printer. <laughs> and speaking of the printer, um, Rosalind has asked, do you have to pay for printing and scanning in the library? Scanning is free, but printing you do have to pay for. Um, for black and white, it's two a sheet, so it's not terribly expensive. You can either buy a printer credit from us um, in the library, or you can pay through WisePay, which I think would have probably been discussed um, in another presentation somewhere. But if, if your parents are feeling generous, they can preload your account um, with printer credit, which may last you for the, uh, the term or the year. No more questions? Apparently not. Well, in that case, we very much hope that we will see you um, next September, that you will come and make yourself known to us in the library, and that you will let us know if there's anything that you would like us to um, add to it at any time, because we're always open to your suggestions. So thank you very much for watching and joining us this evening. Good thank night. you. Bye-bye.